What up guys, Supermetal983 here, here bring you Supermetal Recommendations Episode 4. Now, as I said in the previous episode that this one wasn't going to take as long, and it hasn't indeed, it's only been a month or so, which is all well and good, it's not going to take a year or so, or six months, like last time. But I've already started planning for Episode 5, which is going to come in the upcoming future, uh, I only have one release so far for that um, episode, so... We'll see what happens, see what releases take me, me I and go, ooh, that'll be a good one feature. But we'll see what happens in the upcoming future. But, yeah, this one hasn't taken so long because, um, I'm not going to lie, over the past couple of months I have been listening to quite a bit of music. A lot of things have come into my collection that I thought, oh, I've been after those for a while, I would like to talk about those. Or some newbies, you know, ones that have come into my limelight, shall we say. But, um, we have five releases that I've got for you. Um... We're going to be dwelling into some deathcore and some atmospheric black metal and some funeral doom this episode. So if you, that's your cup of tea, you know, stick around. It's going to be a good episode, I think. But yeah, moving on. This is the first one we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, this is Alder. And this is their latest album called Passage, which uh, came out in 2015. Now, if you aren't too familiar with Alder, they are... Uh, Atmospheric black metal band, um, I believe from the US, and they play a very um, atmospheric style of atmospheric black metal. Like, there's atmospheric black metal, you know, there's the uh, Winter Phyllis and stuff like that, that very atmospheric black metal. But there's also the very, very uh, atmospheric, um, you know, style of atmospheric black metal that kind of serenades you and, and creates real beauty and majesticness in your atmosphere. Uh, wherever you're listening to, whether you're listening to it in your bedrooms or your living rooms or a surround sound, or even if you've just got your earphones in, one through a city centre or the the wilderness, you know, the woodlands and stuff like that, it's always going to connect with you and create that great atmosphere. And Alder, I think, are definitely one of those bands. Now, this album in particular, um, I might as well also mention their last album before this called Tahoma. Um, it's on my one list, I really need to pick that up at some point, because uh, I've only just found out recently that it was pressed on CD, so that'll be happening soon, but anyway. But this album in question was the one that took, um, it didn't really take a while for us to click, because first I really liked it, and then I kind of went off it a little bit, I thought it wasn't as good as Tahoma, but as I've started to listen to it a lot more, I showed a lot more appreciation for this album, and I think this has grown into my favourite of the two albums. Um, I know they've got a previous one before that, which I can't remember yeah, what the title's called, it escapes us. So, if you want to check it out, check it out. I have no doubt in my mind that it's absolutely amazing. So, But this album in particular, I uh, picked it up at Damnation Fest, and since then I've had it on repeat. This is just beautiful, beautiful stuff. It's very... Um, Silhouetting, I'd have to see uh, to describe it. I think Al Alder definitely portrays this kind of like very atmospheric um, majesticness that um, encapsulates it and makes you so relaxed at listening to it. I think Alder has grown into becoming one of my favorites in the atmospheric black metal like worlds. Like up there, up there with the likes of Warden Throne and Agalok has been like the greats in atmospheric black metal, but these, uh, I'd definitely say these are number three for me, because Tahoma is absolutely fantastic, and this one is just as amazing, in my opinion, if not more amazing. I just absolutely love this album, and especially with the wind down, I mean, it's snowing up here in the UK, on the northeast of the UK at the moment, so this is kind of like a perfect album to listen to, if you ask me. It's, uh, when the snow's falling, you stick this album on, it just creates this amazing atmosphere that you just can't shake off it's absolutely amazing so check out all there and the album passage released under i believe this one's um bind room released under bind room so check out bind room if you want a great atmospheric black metal but this album is just fucking killer so make sure you check that out alder with passage now as i said we're going to dwell on some deathcore now this band in my opinion is the most criminally the most criminally underrated deathcore band in the whole world of deathcore. In your subgenres of deathcore, from your blackened deathcores to your down temples and all that, you can just throw all those out the window. When it comes to straight-up deathcore, um, that has just brought it 
every time I've listened to it, these are definitely the guys for it. I'm talking about Mortov Solution. Now, Mortov Solution, in my opinion, are just one of the most devastating, powerful, heavy as fuck bands in the whole deathcore world. Now, their album, The Harbinger, is easily a 10 out of 10. Easily, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the best... The- one of, if not the best, deathcore album in existence. Now, having said that, though, I want to keep that for me 10 out of 10 video, which I'm planning to do in the upcoming future. So, I have to go with their last release, which is also very close to a 10 out of 10, if not a 9.5 out of 10, and that is Insurrection. Now, Insurrection, um, for me, when I first heard it, was the song The Final Hour, featuring Adam Warren of Oceano. If you do not... Get, get blown away by the sheer intensity and unbridled, just untamed heaviness that that song encapsulates. And you're into Deathcore? Just f- fucking get away now. The, like, that song, in my opinion, just encapsulates what's so heavy about Deathcore. Um, also the song, uh, The Blood of Tyrants. Uh, I believe they've done a music video for that, so I'll leave that link down below. But, and Divide and Conquer, uh, Signals, um, Sin and Sacrifice, Sin and Sacrifice, sorry, um, just, oh, then the title track as well, and that artwork, I have to say, is pretty fucking sick, if you ask me, but yeah, this is an absolutely solid album, I absolutely love Molotov Solution, I've been getting, I uh, actually went back to them, I, like, I've always loved them, and then, I'll, when you go back to the, a band after so long, they absolutely love and think 10 out of 10, on their releases, you think to yourself, why the fuck did I leave this alone? And I haven't been able to stop listening to this again, and it's absolutely amazing. You could say this episode is what's been on my playlist lately, you know, but but this is absolutely amazing. If you want some heavy death court and you haven't heard of Molotov Solution, get with the fucking times. Uh, I hope they come back with a new album. I know they were teasing something, uh, I believe it was earlier this year or late last year, but um, I hope... To God, we get a follow-up to this album, because this is God to you. And also check out The Harbinger while I'm at it, because that is God to you as well. Now, I'm just going to take a little quick sip of coffee. <sighs> Caramel. Lovely. Anyway, we're going to go into something a bit more suffocating. A bit more dreary. A bit more... Feels with a lot more depth, I think. And... It's a perfect way to describe this album is the sheer depth that this album travels down to. And it's the cu- uh, the thumbnail art for this video. And you may be able to get it straight away. Ahab with the boats of the Glen Carig. I believe that's how it's pronounced. I think that's how it's pronounced. But yeah. Right. A little bit of a story. I'm not massive on the whole funeral doom movement. I've never re- It's not that I'm not massively into it. It's just... I've just never dwelled into it as much. It's like... It's like when thrash was never a thing for me. I dwelled into a bit and I found havoc, you know, like that kind of thing. But Funeral Doom, like, I've got a couple of albums. I've got, like, um, Atromos, I believe it's called, by Evoking in my collection. And obviously Swallow the Sun's triple album, which the third disc was obviously Funeral Doom. And what I seem to like about Funeral Doom when I listen to it is I like it to be gut-wrenching. I like it to be heavy, just obnoxious and just suffocating as if the the audio equivalent of drowning as some people have um i think Kel blagger has mentioned that about funeral doom and stuff like that is the perfect description that's the kind of funeral doom i like to listen to and this one has been on repeat lately i think this is easily one of the most obnoxiously heavy non-core related albums i have heard in a fucking long time. This came out in 2015 and I and I discovered it I think it was early 2016, I could be wrong on that. And since then I have grown to love this album. I think the whole instrumentation behind it, the whole the the whole boominess, the gloominess in it that just feels like you're at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, the deepest, darkest depths of the ocean. Where it's so crazy and just the most wretched of creatures are down there. And you don't know what's going to happen down there. If there's something bigger or whatever. whatever yeah. You know, this is that equivalent. It feels so 
obnoxious, but it still has this like it's it's weird that it crosses that gloomy funeral doom sound, but it's still like the the genre itself is just filled with so much depth and heaviness, but then it's got this beautiful majesticness that kind of like puts in mind of like an app like you would hear these atmospheres on an atmospheric black metal album, for example. You know what I mean? And then the, the heaviness is just something that some deathcore bands would strive and crave for all these years, but never achieve something as heavy as the likes of Ahab with the boats of the Glen Carring and the Vogels. Oh my god, the vocals are so monstrous in Funeral Doom, and these are easily one of the best I've ever fucking heard. It's so... F the laws. Those fucking laws. They're just so gut-wrenching and just evil, demonic shit. It's just amazing. If you want to hear some fucking awesome Funeral Doom, definitely check out Ahab with the boats of the Glen Carrick. I have to say, these guys are probably my favourite in the whole genre of Funeral Doom. I've checked out, uh, I haven't checked out many albums in the genre, but I've only checked out two albums of these. Um, I can't remember what the last album was called before this. Um, no, Name Escapes Me. But I checked that out not too long ago and I thought it was fucking sick, but this easily takes a biscuit. I just fucking love this album. Make sure you check out Ahab with the boat of the Glen Carrig and also check out some Funeral Doom. And if anyone's got any good Funeral Doom albums, um, not bands, Human Doom albums to check out. Let us know in the comments section down below. I would love to check out some new Funeral Doom and just some obnoxious stuff. Anyway, now this is kind of a newbie to the collection and definitely a newbie to this list. And it was something that I really wanted to feature and talk about because, as I said in my updates and purchases, I picked up um, the band is called Fortress. They're a Quebec uh, black metal band, kind of atmospheric, kind of ambient um, sort of stuff. I picked up their, I was going to pick up their first album, which is this one, Metal Noir Quebecois. I believe that's how it's pronounced, I probably just butchered the living shit out of that because I don't speak French. I believe it's French, but anyway. Um, but while I was at it, I was just about to order that, I thought, you know what, I'm going to check out their follow-up album, which is regarded as one of the best black metal albums according to Count Blagrath. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a shot. And literally from the moment I stuck it on, I was fucking blown away by the the majesticness, the cinematicness, and just the ho the whole atmosphere that was surrounding this album that was so cold and just so very. I don't even know how to describe that that kind of sense that it filled us with. I was just like blown away by it, and I was like, yeah, I have to add that. I need that more than the other album. So here it is. This is their second album called "The Hivers Der Norte Epoche." I don't know how to pronounce it, but my fucking god, this album is tremendous. This is up there as being one of the best atmospheric black metal albums I have heard in a fucking long time. Like, Alder Passage was absolutely fucking amazing. And I absolutely love that album now. I love it just as much as this one. This is up there as being one of the best atmospheric black metal albums that I have heard ever. It's just filled with a bit of, like, just silhouetticness yeah let's go with that it's a bit of silhouette it, it feels like a, an entire silhouette put into music it's just that kind of like beautiful atmosphere that kind of creates a perfect perfect atmosphere like when when it was snowing last night um it was just tickling the the ground not as thick as it is now but the way it was beautifully cascading now i stuck this arm on and just looked at the cover while it, like, just popped my head out of the window every so often, and it was just absolutely amazing. To see that atmosphere unfold was just in its own element, and this album definitely encapsulates that. It's beautiful for the winter, it's perfect for the winter, in fact. So if you ever get a chance to pick up Fortress, uh, any of their albums, definitely pick up this one, if any. If you want somewhere to start off with, go for this album. I listened to Metal Noir Quebec, and when I first heard it, I wasn't, like, overwhelmed with it. I thought it was really good, I just didn't think it was overwhelming, personally. But this was just overwhelming, and I absolutely love it. If you want something just beautiful, as it, just serenading and silhouetic and majestic, 
if you want some of that majestic atmospheric black metal, this is a perfect place to go. Check out Fortress with uh, Les Hivers de Noite Epoch, I believe it's pronounced. I'll probably butcher the living shit out of that, but I do not care. And we're going to conclude these suit metal recommendations with an EP. From a UK down tempo band. Now these guys blew me away when I first heard them um, earlier in the year. And I picked up their CD through Chug Car, And then I fell in love with the CD again. And listened to it non-stop. And still listened to it non-stop. And then I saw them live for the first time at Fall in the Brawl Festival. And I'll tell you something. They fucking annihilated so much heavy obnoxious, gut-wrenching, down-tempo deathcore. If you're into bands like Traitors, fucking Black Tongue, God of Nothing, any of those type of bands, the obnoxiously heavy big dogs in down-tempo, you will love these guys. In my opinion, they deserve a lot more fucking recognition because they, they are fucking insanely good. I'm talking about Bound in Fear with Regicide. Their debut EP, and my fucking god, this is raw, punchy, assaulting, obnoxiously heavy, crushing down tempo done at the most no boundaries, no holding back heaviness. It's gut wrenching to hear. Like, I've heard a lot of down tempo like, over the past couple of years since the down tempo movement came in. Uh, it's on, and there's been some bands that have blew me away. Bound in Fear is definitely one of them. This EP slays so much. It's got seven tracks on it, filled with a lot of guest spots from the likes of um, uh, the vocalists of Drifted, with Instruction, uh, Violent, and Carbine, just bringing their and just adding more brutality to what is already obnoxiously brutal, and just crushing and just if you don't want to punch someone when listening to this album it's not clicking with you and you should be ashamed of it because if you're into deathcore and you haven't heard this and you're into down especially if you're into down tempo this is definitely one of the best eps of 2017 i think this is probably my favorite ep of 2017 uh have to get some more information a little bit um before i put it in my top albums uh, video because I'll obviously mention my favourite EP of the year but this has always stuck up there as being one of the best and it still is the best in my eyes at the moment and wow it's incredible these guys deserve a lot more recognition check them out link down below just their Facebook everything I'm going to link it because this is just punishing stuff this is uh, obviously the CD press I don't think it's uh, available anymore through Chugcore um, because I think um, they sold out but I think uh, Bound and V have a couple of copies left I could be wrong but I got I'm just going to move a bit closer 72 out of 100 um, which I'm really happy about I was going to take this with us to Fall in the Brawl but I completely forgot And but next time I see Bound and V I'm going to ask the lads to sign it because this is just Amazing. This is easily the best down tempo release of 2017, bar none. There's been some great ones, but this one takes the biscuit easily. So yeah, there's five amazing releases that you really need to check out. Um, episode 5 will come very soon, but we're going to recap just a quick little bit, just to show you what we've been talking about. If you've only just clicked on and skipped all the way to the end, you weirdos. But there, we've got Alda with Passage, great atmospheric black metal. If you want something very atmospheric, check them out. Some... One of the most underrated deathcore bands, Molotov Solution, with Insurrection. And then we have some suffocating, suffocating Funeral Doom from Ahab, with the boats of the Glen Carig. And then we have some more atmospheric black metal, very beautiful, especially for this time of the year in the winter. We have Fortress with this Hivers de Noite Epoque. Yep. Once again, butcher the living shit. And then the main recommendation for this episode is going to be Bound in Fear with the Regicide EP. Killer down tempo from the UK. Definitely something you need to check out if you want something obnoxiously raw and nasty sounding with some filthy, filthy fucking vocals, I might as well add. Just filthy, disturbing. Kind of as if reminds us at some points of cattle decapitation. That's how filthy it is. So, yeah, make sure you check out all these releases. Uh, I've got a couple more. 
ideas floating around for episode 5. I've only got one album actually solidified that I definitely want to showcase. And I've already started working on the um, thumbnail for it, which is um, coming along very nicely. I might as well add it. It might change because I might come up with a better release. But we'll see what happens. But yeah, make sure you check out all these releases and check out the bands and just go and support them. They deserve more recognition if you ask me. But yeah, I'll see you until the next episode of Super Metal Recommendations. And remember, stay metal. And I'll see you later. I'm going to finish my coffee now.